here on a call and the problem is the temperature is dipping and then now it's working okay. The old LED lights there and they're alternating back and forth slowly. I bet you it's probably a flame sensor fault. They always seem to have an issue with that. And you gotta watch this thing because it'll trick you, especially with it upside down. So alternating slow, there's alternating fast. They're slow. Watch guard, burners failed to ignite, flame sense probably. All right, so this is a G50. Everything's a G something with these guys. 5801, so the five and eight had, used to be months or days. I forget exactly what it was, but the old one is what you need to look at. So it's a 2001. The one thing you definitely want to watch when you're doing a model number is that dash two number, that dash oh two. That's how many times it's been revised. So looking in here, you know, it is, well, 20 years old now. This was a pretty reliable unit. It's an 80 percenter. Um, got the resettable breaker on the side. That was one nice thing. Here's flame sensor. It's already been changed once. See that flame sensor? It's not, nothing's broke. Somebody sold them a flame sensor when they didn't need one. If that thing's not busted and not loose there, clean it. And then they left their nasty old steel wool in there. So anyhow, we'll leave that there. Let's check the heat exchanger. Let's make sure it's safe to operate. Don't waste a lot of time on it if it ain't safe. Make sure all of our wire nuts are good to go. That comes right from the wall through there. No switch out here. So uh, sometimes they'll put it on the wall, but they didn't. So let's go ahead and check the heat exchanger real quick. These were pretty, pretty reliable. Nothing in the primary. Can't see real great in the other side. Now the problem is you can't see all the way up in here. So we'll watch it to see if there's any disturbances, but other than that primary section there, which always is, I knew is gonna be a problem later down the road, uh, eventually you're gonna to have to try to either look through your limit there on the fan limit and inspect it, or basically watch for any fan disturbances or flame disturbances when the fan comes on. Let's go ahead and check the flame sense signal now. I guarantee it's going to be low, then we'll check it after we're done. All right, got my magnet switch on there, which that's down in my toolbox area of my description of the video. So we've got it hooked on the leader there with our leads. So we'll hook through there to there. We're checking microamps. And let's see what we have first. All the burners lit. Microamps are 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.5. They're dropping. That's not going to work. And it should drop out here any moment. Yep. So it did. So we know for certain that that is our problem. Now, we could have just cleaned it and moved on. This is reassurance that the board's working correctly, and we'll see what the difference is when we're done. So let's go ahead and pull that flame sensor out of there. Um, this is where your right angle tool comes in handy. Got the power off. We'll be able to get right in here like that. Put an extension on the end of that and just undo it. I kind of recommend doing this by hand. You could do it with your drill, but not a good idea if it's too uh, aggressive. I did switch back to my 11-1, but if you notice, that works out just nice. So we've got the flame sensor out. It really doesn't look that bad. Lennox has always been good about not uh, damaging the metal because it gets too hot, like some brands out there. It, it really does not look that dirty. It really doesn't. You can, you can get a good angle at it. We're going to go ahead and clean that up with my stainless steel brush that I like. Once again, I think I have these in the toolbox thing. Nothing special about it. Stainless steel. Brass has a tendency to leave residue behind. Stainless steel doesn't scratch anything up. And like I've said a million times, you can run that thing right on your skin and it doesn't hurt your skin. So it's not gonna hurt the uh, metal there. So we've got it all cleaned up. We just ran the brush on there. You know, like you can see, there's no, no grooves in my metal. 
nothing's grooved up so go ahead and get that back in there we'll check uh micro amps and then we're going to go through and we're going to give them some some value for their money because this didn't take very long to do and nobody wants to feel like it was a simple job and you paid all this extra money for somebody to come out so we're going to do a safety check on everything we're going to check our electrical we're going to check make sure our capacitor's good to go make sure our amp draws right on the draft motor and blower motor just going to go through and double check all of our connections in here make sure they're all tight on the board make sure the thermostat doesn't have the plastic underneath the screw that's a problem i see all the time so we've got that done so let's go ahead and get this back in there and we'll recheck it and then we'll continue forward got that back in there it's all hooked back up shove our little magnet back on and let's watch it try over again on off on and off got a little bit of a whine to it See what our micro amps here are now. It's a little dusty, so we're gonna clean that out there too. These igniters, uh, the resistance on them are a little bit odd. I've not found that to be successful as far as determining when they're gonna go out. They last forever. And okay, there's that. Micro amps are higher. Almost a full one point. But usually you would think it'd be higher than that, but we've more than doubled, almost doubled it over what it was before. So that's a lot better than what it was. Now they already are grounding this. Uh, one of the old sayings they used to say, what's mean and green and makes a pulse run mean? That was the uh, ground wire. And they would always ground their stuff real close to the burners, which is pretty standard now. Uh, but that works its way all the way back up here to the board. Everything in here is live and high voltage for the most part, so keep your fingers out of there. Um, you can see the heat is getting a little bit warm on that rubber. It's starting to dry rot a little bit. But it's not cracked yet. If you was to mess with it, there's a good chance it may crack. So holding it at 1.8 area, so I'd say we probably got that problem fixed. It's not going to get a whole lot better. The only thing you could try to do is see if grounding it better would make a difference, which I don't think it would. And that was why I built this one here. It's my meter lead turned into a nice big old jumper. You could actually come down here clamp right onto the bell. We're at 1.9 now. Come right up here to where the ground wire is itself, which is on the back side of that. That's too close to get in that. That's high voltage up here on top, so let's just go here. It's not gonna make a difference. Hooked on, unhooked. Didn't make a difference. So, yeah. So you know it's grounded as good as it's gonna get grounded. So let's go ahead and get that undone. We'll go ahead and hook it. 1001, 1002. So if you shut down on flame sets, good to go there. Now Linux never waited for the whole blower to completely bring the temperature down. It'll try to reignite here in a couple seconds. The spark ignition was even quicker yet. Let's see. A lot less delays, they were straight to the point. So, it's been running for a little bit. We'll go ahead and leave this valve off. All right, and let's go ahead and continue on with the other checks. You don't see me use this very often, but where do you think this one came from? Look familiar? So, yeah, comes in handy. If you ever get one that you're throwing away, salvage that. It comes in handy. Save you 10 bucks, 15 bucks, whatever they sell for. So let's go ahead and hook this thing back up. All right, look what we just found. Capacitor should be five microfarads. It comes in at 1.9. So did we just save them a service call for later? Sure did. So let's go ahead and get that capacitor changed. 
All it would have taken to make this thing run was clean the flame sensor. But we just did the customer a service by checking that. So let's go ahead and get that replaced and uh, recheck it then. Uh, we could check it before and after on the amperage too if you're curious to see what happens. All right, we're gonna go ahead and jump G just to see what it is on high speed, see what kind of uh, amperage we get just for a couple seconds here to see what we are. With the door off, don't matter. It's gonna be the same scenario to compare it against. Yeah, these actually run a different fan speed for G. That's one of the, let's see how it is now. So 3.7 amps. Once it went up to cooling speed, back down to fan speed, G speed, so 3.7. Let's see what it is when we get done. We got a brand new Mars capacitor there. It's rated for 5, and we're at 5.1. Let's go ahead and get that installed real quick. So we got that back in there. Let's put it back together. What it's going to do is going to try to ramp up the fan, back the fan, blah, blah, blah. But eventually it's going to drop down to the fan speed uh, for the uh, blower to continuously run. Right, once it stabilizes, door is off just like it was before. Prior to, we were at 3.7 amps. They are at 0.1. So we've dropped it a little over half an amp of current that we saved them. Not a lot. But it's like leaving a light bulb run, so not bad. You did them a service for a $10, $15 part for a capacitor. Anyhow, we know that we made a difference on that, so let's go ahead and get that off of there. And let's go ahead and let it run. Um, let's check our motor though first. Make sure the end of it's clean, which. Not a whole lot of room there. It's a little bit dirty on the end. What else we got in there? Look at that. What's that right there? It's like a piece of duct tape or something. So we'll get that out of there. Yep, something in there. Let's get that out of there. That's where these little gizmos come in handy. That right there ought to be just fine. Grab this little rag. Go clean it off. So we'll get back in there and we'll have to mess with that. Get a hold of it and finally got it. Here we go. Gee. Silver tape. For those that don't know how to do the sheet metal, everyone's favorite silver tape. So yeah. Nice. So now we should be able to get in there and get that motor wiped off with a rag and that uh, plier should make it a lot easier. All right, so we got everything cleaned out. It's better than what it was. It's just getting old. The motor looks a lot better on the end there. Not as much grease now, catching all the dirt. We've already checked all of our wires, made sure they're tight. Let's go ahead and put the door back on and make sure this thing runs. Probably not a big deal, but at 20 years old, I'll put on there at the draft motor sound a little funny. I hate to replace a bunch of things on something that's already pretty old and it's about ready to need replaced here before long. Unless they need it. And Linux is always known for making a lot of noise on the draft motor. Crossover looks good, nice and clean. Flames look good. Let's watch and see how it acts when the blower comes on. Ugh. That was quite a disturbance. But it went away. So, hmm. Let's 
kind of bothersome. It's pretty well sealed. Tell you what. Let's uh, let's check uh, see if we can see anything uh, through that limit spot here. That was quite a bit more than what I'm used to. And I mean, it could have been some air leakage down here on the bottom. I can feel some out here. The doors open over here, which goes right out to the uh, garage. So we'll shut that. Let's go ahead and put this thing back down again. All right, so we pulled that out, and you can see in there pretty decent, uh, at least the first two. There's one over here on the side, but I don't see any impingement marks or anything where, you know, we were looking at. I got in there real good with my flashlight and stuff, and if, uh, if I had any signs or thought that there was anything causing that, more than just the dust in the air, uh, dust being stirred up in the air, you could always pull the blower out and check it from the top, but I don't think it's going to be the case because... We really don't have any major wear in there. It's pretty even all the way across, all the same temperature looking in the metal. Or the metal looks like it's all been about the same temperature, even temperature. Um, so uh, I'm gonna say she looks fine. You can see the bottom half here, see the top all the way to there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put her back together and let her run. Just wanna make sure. All right, so when I kicked on that time, I didn't have near the disturbance on the flames. It was just a little bit of a Flutter from the dust because watch. Now yeah. yeah, that changes it, just a little bit of dust in the air. So, yeah, so anyhow, we're gonna go check temperature rise. We've got to go inside to get the closest register. Can't do it out here, it's too much radiant heat. I was able to check the evaporator coil from that hole there also, and everything looked clean on that. 35 to 65 is the temp rise on this thing, so let's go ahead and see what we get. That wraps that one up. Pretty simple call. Just goes to show it's always good to check everything while you're there. Less chance of getting a call back. Temperature rise on that thing, I think, was 46. It's good all the way up to 65. So we're nowhere near going to be tripping the uh, limit switches or anything like that. We gave her a good, honest look over. Didn't just fix one problem, but we went through and gave her a full service. And uh, nickels and dimes so we gave her her money's worth she's real happy and then uh, now we're heading on to the next one